Good afternoon, Hughes Hearth Heroes. This is Mr. Hearth here, and today is flip number two on February 19th, 2014. Again, in your notes for this video, you should be taking down today's date that you're watching the video and the title, which is flip number two, stations packet, rational function number two. So this is problem number two from your stations packet. So you're taking notes in your notebook, but you may also want to copy this down to within that packet to complete the packet. Again, my name here is Mr. Hearth, and I am going to be walking you through this problem today using this flipped lesson. So this is the, uh, the question in mind. We're doing rational function station number two. So just to not make, make sure we don't miss it, we are doing rational function station packet, and it's problem number two. So if I read this first, let's see. Two hoses are used to fill Maddie's neighborhood swimming pool. One hose alone can fill the pool in 10 hours. The second hose can fill it in 12 hours. The pool's drain can empty the pool in eight hours. If the two hoses are working and the drain is open, by mistake, of course, how long will it take to fill the swimming pool? So obviously, the swimming pool will fill up at some point. It's just a matter of time. So we, we need, to need to figure out how much time. This becomes an overwhelming problem, especially if you've never done a problem like this before, but then um, if you don't even know where to get started. So here's where to get started. Let's draw a simple diagram of a pool. So if I've got a pool, I'm just going to make a nice shape like this. Then to represent the hoses, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a hose coming in and another hose coming in. And I'm going to put in H next to those to denote that they are the hoses. At the bottom of the pool, I'm going to put a nice circular drain and I'm going to call that D for my drain. So now I have a nice diagram picture I can use. Um, while I'm doing this, if I can kind of remember and note to myself, hey, hoses add water, so they're a positive add, um, you know, filling portion to the pool, and the drain is actual negative. So we have two additions to the water and one subtraction from the water to keep in mind for later on. Okay, but let's kind of try and keep it simple first. So to keep it simple, let's focus on the, just this first statement. One hose alone can fill the pool in 10 hours. 10 hours. You may not really know what this means, so let's just make a chart and see if we can see if anything comes out of it. So if I make a little chart, a little table here, okay, if I have the number of hours off to the left, and I say how full is the pool on the right, well, after one hour, it's sh just with focusing on the, the on this hose, it should be one tenth full, and after two hours, it should be two tenths full, and three hours, it should be three tenths full, and so on and so forth. To eventually, after that tenth hour, it should be ten tenths full and full. Now that is just with that one hose. Of course, we have a second hose and a drain to worry about here. But again, let's just focus on just this right now. So if we focus on just this issue, what, do we, what can we make of this? Well, we notice that, again, how long will it take? That's going to be our variable. How long will it take? That's time. That's hours. Oh, so this h is really our x. That's our variable. Well, if we notice that the number of hours is always the numerator for how full this pool is getting from just this hose, can you notice that this hose is filling the pool at a rate of x over 10 for the 10 hours it takes? Well, if that's true, then a second hose that can fill it in 12 hours should take x over 12 to fill it then. Okay? Since it's 12 hours, we have 12 x over 12 to fill it with that second hose. The pool's drain can empty the pool in eight hours. So again, that's x over eight. Now this is drained, so it's a taking away effect. That's that negative we referring to back here. So if we put these three pieces together, we would wind up with x 
over 10 plus another x over 12 minus an x over 8. <clears throat> and that's all set equal to filling up how many pools? One pool. So now we get a rational function, a rational equation that we can solve. This is really just a rational equation because it's an equation that has ratios, has a fraction in it. How do you clear a an equation with fractions? Simple, right? Multiply the whole thing times a common denominator. If we look at the numbers 10, 12, and 8, what's the lowest common denominator? Lowest common denominator, LCD, LCD. So if I take this back here again, lowest common denominator, LCD of 10, 12, and 8 is going to be 120. I'm just going to skip over that because that's not, not the point of this exercise. You can ask me tomorrow in class, I'll figure that out. Since I need to distribute everything by 120, 120 divided by 10 will give me my 12x. 120 divided by 12 will give me my 10x. 120 divided by 8 would give me 15x. Notice that's still minus. 20 times, 120 times 1 is 120. Now I've just got like terms I can combine here on the same side. 12 plus 10 is 22, 22 take away 15 is 7x, and that's set equal to 120. To, to solve for x, we divide by 7, and if we do that, we find out our final answer for hours is 17 hours and 1 seventh an hour. So the final answer again is 17 and 1 seventh hours on how long it's going to take this pool to fill up. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Again, you're going to be asking questions and having questions ready and notes ready that should look very similar to what is on the screen. And thank you.